Here's what I tell him. Our next speaker, I am proud and honored to introduce to this august group. Jenny Beth Martin was a former executive with the Home Depot and Mead Paper Company when she heard Rick Santelli's famous Stop the Spending rant in 2009. In February of 2009, following a series of massive expenditures of the United States government by Congress under Presidents George W. Bush and Barack Obama, Jenny Beth and several other concerned citizens formed the beginnings of the modern Tea Party movement. She contributed to the nascent Tea Party movement by reaching out to and mobilizing thousands of like-minded like -minded citizens. Jenny Beth Martin and Tea Party Patriots now use their network to reach out to millions of Americans every week with education and updates about fiscal responsibility, free markets principles, and constitutionally limited government. Her first book, Tea Party Patriots, The Second American Revolution, was published in 2012. Thank you, and God bless you, Jenny Beth Martin. God bless America. Jenny Beth. Ten years ago, Monday, we had our first round of Tax Day Tea Parties, and we've got a birthday cake here to celebrate that. Um, we, we had those Tax Day Tea Parties, and this year, we are celebrating our anniversary by holding rallies around the country again. And to make sure that we are up with the times, our theme is Stop Socialism, Choose Freedom, which is very much what we just heard about. So. We have over 400 people who have stepped up to organize these Stop Socialism, Choose Freedom rallies on Monday, and there's going to be one right here in, in New Hampshire. I'd like you for just a moment, if you don't mind, to take your phone out and text this number, to text my, one of our cell phone numbers. It is 404-996-2000. Four zero four nine nine six one seven one seven, and then you just put this all as one phrase: Manchester NH four one five, as in April fifteenth. Manchester NH four one five. And we're just regular people. Really, nothing special about us, but we share something in common: a deep abiding love for our country and what makes it so special. Our Constitution and the rights it protects. Rights that come to us from our Creator, not our government. And it says so right there in the Declaration of Independence. And our freedom. We've been fighting to defend it against liberals and now out-and-out out socialists who want to fundamentally transform it. Ten years ago, many of us grew upset at our government because we saw Washington insiders making deals that grew our government and grew our national debt as they took away our freedom, with no regard for the impact their deals were having on our lives. And we wanted to make a difference, and we still do. I'll bet that motivates a lot of you. When Rick Santelli gave that rant against President Obama's stimulus bill on the floor of the Chicago Mercantile, we were ready. The day after that rant, two dozen of us got on a conference call to talk about what we could do to take up his call to action to have tea parties like our founding fathers did. 
Within a week, we held protests, large and small, across the country. By April 15th of 2009, we had organized more than 850 protests with 1.2 million people in attendance nationwide. We, gave, we haven't looked back since then. We gave the House Republicans their majority in 2010 because they campaigned on our values. And in 2014, the Senate Republicans gained a majority, again, because they campaigned on our values. And then we helped win the White House for Donald Trump in 2016, talking about our values and the way he was talking about our values. When some thought our nominee's campaign was doomed and chose to abandon him, we doubled down our efforts. Working through our Super PAC Tea Party Patriot Citizens Fund, we organized volunteers all across the country. We called, we, had, we made more than two million volunteer phone calls, including a million volunteer phone calls into the state of Pennsylvania. We sent more than 100,000 hand-addressed postcards. Then, we, on top of all that, we sent seven million robocalls and a half million pieces of mail into Florida, Pennsylvania, North Carolina, Ohio, and Wisconsin. And we helped win. At Tea Party Patriots, we've grown from, more than, from just two dozen people on a conference call in the spring of 2009 to more than se or around 750 groups today and more than two million supporters. Many of them are like Fran and Matt and Diane and Omer who organized today's event. And I just want to thank you so much for organizing such a great event. At Tea Party, oh, I have said that, we get on a call every single Sunday night with our, our local supporters from across the country. Omer, Aaron, gets on that call with us. And around about 200 are on that call every single week. They said the direction that our organization will go. They determine what grassroots actions we will take, like the rallies on Monday. And they tell us whether they want us to approve um, or support or dis or stand against certain pieces of legislation. We're a grassroots, bottom-up organization, and we work to help empower the grassroots activists. We know our Constitution demands a republic, and a republic takes time to move. It does not happen instantly, and it requires work to maintain. We're fighting against 100 years of progressivism in our country. We must be diligent in our efforts to expand personal freedom and economic freedom and to move us towards a debt-free future. You see, contrary to what the mainstream media seems to think, we're less concerned about what happens during elections than we are with what happens after the elections. Our mission is to hold elected officials accountable we believe there are too many politicians in Washington who say one thing back home to get elected and then do something entirely different when they get to Washington, D.C. And our job is to try to end that phenomenon by making sure that every elected official's constituent knows, what he do, what, knows the difference between what he says and what he does. The, and there are some some politicians who keep campaign promises, like the Democrats who resist President Trump at all costs. Look at what they've done to our borders, to our, the security at our border. We believe strongly in the rule of law. Without the rule of law, we're no different than, bana than banana republics. We believe strongly that President Trump is working to do everything he can to solve the border security crisis. I've traveled to the border numerous times. Most recently, I was there in January. And I can tell you, it really is a crisis situation there. We've got to stop the flow of illegal immigrants crossing our southern border. They're being coached to use our asylum process against us to claim asylum when no such claim is warranted. And they're overwhelming the border. Last month, DHS said they apprehended more than 100,000 people trying to cross the border illegally. We haven't seen those kind of numbers in a decade or more. 
I urge you to call your congressman and your two senators and tell them that you want them to support President Trump's efforts to secure the border and tell them you'll be watching. Now, I want to take just a few moments to tell you about two projects we're going to launch. One is about a very small and important thing, and the other is about a big and very important thing. First, the small thing. We look at a woman like Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, who we were just watching on the screen, and we wonder where did our educational system go wrong? <laughs> <laughs> we wonder how in the world some young person, any young person, could look at the lessons of history and conclude that socialism offered a positive vision for the future. And we look at the history, anyone who looks at the history of socialism makes, it, she sees one thing perfectly clear. It's never worked anywhere it's been tried. And then we realize we no longer teach them this in school. It's not their fault they come out of school with no understanding of history, with no appreciation of what makes America different, with no understanding that person, I mean that economic freedom guarantees personal freedom. If they don't know what, American, what makes America exceptional, then it's our responsibility to teach them. It's not that difficult. In fact, I can tell you in 56 words why America is exceptional and what, it, what makes it different from all other countries. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, that to secure these rights, Governments are instituted among men, deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed. Stop and think about those words. Clock TV.